Welcome to this tutorial we are going to be doing today on the structure, basic naming and identification of features of the sarcomere. The sarcomere being the contractile unit of the myofibril that we've already examined. So contractile unit within our myofibril. And there's not just going to be one sarcomere within our myofibril, there's going to be many, 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 all the way along, all contracting together to create movement within the muscle that we're sending our action potential to and we're wanting to move. So this sarcomere here is going to go from one end into another sarcomere straight away and they're all going to contract together. So let's quickly just revise what we did before. We had this muscle fiber here zoomed in and we said that this feature at the top here was going to be an individual myofibril. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say a muscle fiber or a myofibril, then go back to our last few videos where we discussed the gross and microscopic anatomy of muscles. Before we got down to this point, which is now ultra zoomed in, to the myofibril into this individual unit called the sarcomere. And our sarcomere has a few distinct features that we can use to identify the different parts of it. The first of them being the Z-disc. The Z-disc, this portion that we're going to see at either end that is going to form the point where one sarcomere joins onto the next. So sarcomeres go from one Z-disc to the next, so they're going to be at the ends. And we can see that there are a few different types of proteins that are attached to either side of that Z-disc, and we'll talk about those in a moment after we've divided our sarcomere into sections. So we can see these grouping of lines going straight down the middle that we call the M-line of the sarcomere. M line for middle, so it's the middle line and it's made of strands of proteins called myomesin. So remember the M line for myomesin and the middle. Now next we're going to see a slightly larger area called the H zone. The H zone is just the name we give this segment here where we don't have our actin filaments. We do have our myosin, and we're going to talk about what those two strange words are in a moment, but for now all you have to know is that within the H zone we do not have any actin, just myosin, so it's all of this region here is our H zone. The next area we need to know is between these two points here, where we're going to see most of the action happening within this sarcomere, and it's called the A-band. So the A-band. So we'll just write down quickly for, in a moment when we understand what all these individual features are, the A-band is going to be the area where we find the whole thick filament. Now the thick filament was our myosin. So the A-band has our whole thick filament, and we'll have a region right next to it, which is going to cross into our sarcomere that we have alongside the current sarcomere that we're in. And it's going to be called the I-band. And the I-band is simply the point between one sarcomere and the next where one thick filament ends and the next thick filament begins. So the point between thick filaments. And we're only going to find actin in that area actin and our Z-disc and another protein which we haven't discussed just yet but we'll talk about soon. So I-band, point between thick filaments. Now that we've covered all of the different areas and how to segregate our sarcomere, we can actually talk about what this thick filament is. So I've just colored in this area here of a thick filament on our sarcomere and this zoomed in area as well called myosin. Now, myosin is the protein units that make up our thick filament. 
and the filament is going to be made up of many many myosin units all interwoven together that each have two myosin heads and a myosin tail which make up this whole myosin molecule. And the other filament that we're going to find, the thin filament, is our actin. Now I've mentioned actin earlier in this video. So our actin is going to be this area in blue. So we can see it extending almost the full length of the sarcomere on either side of that H zone. And these are the individual subunits of the actin here. So now that we can see where our actin and myosin are situated within our sarcomere, we have to know that the myosin interacting with the actin is what's going to actually cause the contraction of that sarcomere. And it happens in what's called the sliding filament model of contraction. And we'll do a whole video on that very soon. But for now, all we're really focusing on is the naming of the features and structures of the sarcomere. So we have our thick and thin myosin and actin filaments, and within our actin we'll have another regulatory protein that I've just put in orange here. So a regulatory protein called tropomycin. And the tropomycin is going to help stiffen all of our subunits of the actin into a, a helix type of shape. And it's also going to block the attachment points between your myosin and actin so that we don't have involuntary contraction because this myosin and the uh, actin really, really want to integrate with each other, but they can't because tropomycin is in the way. And the second regulatory protein that we have going along with our actin is troponin, and your troponin is going to be bound to the tropomycin and is the three protein unit that is involved directly with allowing contraction to happen. So our actin thin filament also had troponin and tropomycin accompanying it. Now the only protein we haven't discussed yet in this video is titan. Now titan is going to be the elastic type protein that is going to link your thick filaments onto your Z-disc. So I've just highlighted them here in green. And something important to distinguish about the Titan is it doesn't only go from your Z-disc to where the thick filament begins. It runs all the way through your thick filament to attach at the M-line. So it's going to form the core of your thick filament. So one last time, it's elastic and is going to help with recoil after that sarcomere contracts. So now we know how to name and distinguish all of the different areas and structures within our sarcomere, and we also know a little bit about them and what they do. But the last thing we're going to want to know is that all of our filaments, so all of our, our thick and thin filaments, are going to line up across all of our myofibrils. Now the myofibrils being these units within our muscle fibers. This is what's going to be known as light and dark banding. Now our dark band is referring to our A band. So I'll just write that next to our A band. So that's our dark band. And it's dark because it's much more heavily populated with proteins. So we've got the myosin and actin we can see all together through there. And our I band is going to be our light band. The light band not having that thick myosin, so when we look at the muscle, it's not going to appear as dark. And if we look on our myofibrils down here within a muscle fiber, we can see that all of the bands are going to be lining up together. This is what's going to cause something that we call striations. Striations meaning it's going from light to dark to light to dark to light to dark. And that's going to be caused by our A bands, our dark bands, and our I bands, which are our light bands, going one after the next, after the next, sarcomere to sarcomere to sarcomere, all the way along our myofibrils within the muscle fiber or the muscle cell itself. And now we know everything that's going to be within our sarcomeres, and we can begin to learn 
how our muscles actually contract. So in the next video we're going to talk about our sliding filament model of contraction. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.